Hello and welcome back. Today on my, on my DTF series, we're gonna be doing pretty much the final end result of the conversion kit for the 8550. We're also gonna be removing the bottom tray for anybody that wants to do a stationary platform. So I'm gonna show you um, how to remove that one. That is not necessary. Um, if you can find a way to make a level surface for your, for your exit tray to you know have an even level surface for that paper. Um, so if you can achieve that, you don't need to do this part. However, I couldn't achieve it. So for me, I think it was a lot easier easier, um, less time consuming to just remove that exit tray. So I'm going to be showing you how to do that. After that, I'm going to show you how it's printing, how it's performing. I'm going to show you a little bit probably on my workstation so you can see how it lays out. Um, show you the, the, the waste tank. Um, and just pretty much that's it. And should maybe, maybe do a couple of prints to show you guys how it's printing out. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, guys, so to orientate yourself, um, this is the front of the printer. This back here is the back piece of the printer. You can see it with your with your rollers. Um, there's two ways to remove the tray. I'm going to I'm going to be doing what I think is the easiest. Um, but technically, if you remove the screw right here, this pl black plastic piece that is on this side, that's pretty much um, it has all your gears and that's what pushes the tray back and forth. So if you remove the screw, pull down a little bit and force it out um, because again, it, ha it has gears on it. Um, then this tray will be free floating. And then if you make this past the stop, then you'll be able to get it out. I believe that there's a lot of struggling with that, um, especially getting this, this stop to go through. Um, you might break some pieces of plastic. So this is what I find the easiest. We're gonna be removing this bottom plastic piece right here on this side. There is four screws. I'm trying to get you guys because there's not enough light. Um, this is one right here. So one, two, three, four. Those are gonna be large uh, Phillips screws. And underneath of that one, there, there should be around like six um, countersink screws. So you'll be able to tell the difference. So long screws are for the bottom and your countersinks are for the top. So let's start it. Let's get started. So that is the plastic piece. That's number one, that is the bottom one. Now we're gonna be removing these countersinks. They're a lot smaller. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this one down and we're gonna slide this one off and the tray's out. <clears throat> now, I don't know if you guys saw it fall down. Um, there's a small gear. I like to install everything back. Um, this small gear is going to go on this part right here and it's going to grab this um, gear on the side. That's what brings the tray in and out. I like to install it back. Um, I like to put all these pieces back so then I don't lose them. So I'm just going to go ahead and reinstall them even though if you don't feel like you want to install them, if you're good not losing screws, you don't have to install it back. You can just leave it here um, and that's it. Your, your tray's out. However, I like to put everything back so I don't lose the screws. All right, there you have it. So now the tray is completely out of the way. Um, and now we're gonna be working on a platform instead of having a tray. All right, guys, there you have it. That's the finished product. So here we are on the workshop. Um, we're gonna be doing a test sprint in a second so you guys can see how it's, how it's working. Um, wanna give you a shot of the, of the um, end result. Um, however, I also wanted to show you guys what I did for my work platform. I'll give you guys a better angle in just a second, but pretty much this is my stationary one. Now. This was a piece of acrylic that I had, a plexiglass that I had on my garage just laying around. Um, I cut uh, four blocks. The blocks on the blo on the back right here, I cut them at one and three quarters. Um, that gave me the height that I was looking for. And then the ones on the front at one and a half. Um, <clears throat> so I did that to make sure that um, I know that's the spot that when I put it in there, I'm always gonna have um, a good print that I'm not gonna have any any problems. Um, it's pretty much marked. Just always, if you're gonna use um, the tray for your platform, be careful there's a screw right here on the corner that might, um, if if you put your block on top of that screw, it might make it go in an angle. That's why I picked that. Um, however, you don't have to use plexiglass. You can use any 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 work um, surf, surface. Um, so this is what I was using before. Um, 
you know, <laughs> old reliable cardboard. And what I was using for, it was a uh, styrofoam. So what I did before, and I'll show you guys, and um, I'm trying to show you as quick as, as I can. So I had my styrofoam in here, and then I had my, my cardboard right here on the front. Um, and that worked, that worked pretty good for me um, for a while. But then after, after a couple of prints, you, you guys can start seeing, you know, all the lines on the cardboard, and the cardboard starts flexing, and that makes me um, have bad prints. So I needed it something um, more permanent. So that's when I I, um, I chose to do the the plexiglass one, um, and again this is just a piece that I had laying on the garage. You don't have to do it with plexiglass. Any type of of um, any any strong surface will will suffice. And I use just two by four, um, just two by four blocks, and there you have it. So that way I know that I'm I'm steady all the time. That's where I go. Um, and that's how I print. So I'll be doing a test print that I have ready for you guys already so you can see it in action. And then I'll just show you a real thing that I did. So I have a, a craft paper cutter. Um, I don't use to cut my rolls, but I don't like to buy the single sheets. I like to buy the rolls and I cut them for uh, at length. But um, what I did is I put this so when my paper is on my work surface, um, it's at, it's exactly at the 19 inches. So all I gotta do is just bring it to my work surface and then I have a nice, nice cut every time, nice and straight. So I'm not gonna have any problems with the feed. So this is something that, that um, I encourage you guys to do. It's, it's pretty easy, pretty simple. Um, and you know, just don't use it to cut it. It ain't gonna cut it. And if it does, it's gonna leave it all jagged and it's not gonna feed well, but it, it makes me, um, it allows me to have the, the 13 by 19 every single time the way I want it. Um, and also it gives me room to cut them smaller if need to. Um, and, and that's just a little trick that I do. So here we go. And um, I'm going to pause the video. And so give you guys a better, uh, a better look on how it's working. All right. So a quick shot um, of the finished product. There you can see my waste tank hose. And I have it run with the power cable. And it goes behind the desk. And pretty much I have my waste tank all the way in the bottom right there. Um, and then that way it's completely away. Make sure that I don't tip it over and not that it needs my workstation um, nice, neat, and clean. So um, I'm going to try to angle this, um, get the camera steady so you guys can see it in action. So there you have it, guys. I'm going to try to keep this short, try to keep it uh, pretty much simple. So um, that that's how to remove the tray. Um, apologize, my camera died as soon as that print was almost completed. Um, and then because it was on the way, I ruined it. So if you guys can can take a quick look, um, I pretty much damaged this, this top part right here. Um, 
pretty much damaged the print. Um, however, printed out pretty, pretty good quality. Um, this is a matte finish. It's a hot and cold peel paper um, and it, it came out pretty good. I did some other other prints um, just to test different different um, papers, different peels. So this is a cold peel. Um, this is a, a, a more smooth finish, but the paper has a lot more shine to it. Um, it's not as matte. So I wanted it to, to check all that stuff, see how see how all my prints. And so far it's printing well. This is the same one um, on the same paper. And then you guys can see pretty, pretty good quality of prints. Um, I'm pretty happy with the results of it. I'm hoping that you guys um, had a good result for it. Also, I wanna uh, throw some shout outs out there for my friend uh, Cleaver Phase. That's the art that I'm using. Um, that's the, he's the one that, that owns all the rights for all these prints. He's the artist that created all that stuff. So I wanted it, I, I do some of my own stuff, but I wanted it something with a lot more quality. Um, and he is an amazing artist. So I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be posting um, down below a little a quick link on his portfolio if you guys are interested in checking his art, but that's pretty much the art that you guys are gonna see. Um, most of my videos, if I am gonna show you how to print something or anything like that, I might use this art. So it has a lot more quality, more definition. So it's not just a little quick PNG, you know, that you do like a, like a company logo or something like that. I wanna show you guys a picture, um, something, you know, that might be on even on a canvas, you know, something with high definition so you can see how the printer is printing out. So I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe. Give me a comment if you guys have any questions. I'll try to answer them as much as possible. So once again, thank you for watching.